Hello my fellow Freedom Builders and welcome back to the channel to a video today where I am going to compare GM with Tesla. And yes, I know they are two very, very different companies and I can tell you right away, I am not going to decide for you if you should go for one or the other. But I am going to show you how you can uh, evaluate if you want GM or Tesla and what their long-term uh, growth potential is. So first of all, Tesla has been in a lot of news lately, as you know. There was the, uh, let's just see here, the Morgan Stanley that predicts that Dojo supercomputer could add $500 billion in market value. Now, I was thinking about making a video just about that because that is simply a, a, a crazy uh, statement. I, I did make one video about it the other day, but what I figured out afterwards, someone showed me a link. Morgan Stanley is actually, they own uh, something like $7.7 .7 billion uh, worth of Tesla stocks, with, which means that the day they got this story out in the media, they made $770 million. Not bad for a one day's work. Anyway, this is a part of the today, and this is probably a part of the future with the Dojo supercomputer. So we'll have a look at what should it actually take uh, for this Dodeo supercomputer growth and so on to really, really make a difference for Tesla. Also, there was this news that Elon Musk and Katie Wood think Tesla could be worth over six trillion dollars in the future. And then there are something that could prove them wrong. Uh, there are probably a lot of things in there, but I will uh, have a look at today if a price tag of two thousand dollars by 2027 is realistic. That is in four years, so that will take quite a lot, I think. But let's have a look at the graphs just in a second. Uh, now, first of all, when you see news like this, remember to just think to yourself, could there be some sort of agenda here? Could Elon Musk and Katie Woods have some common ground as to why they think it could be interesting to pump up the price of Tesla shares? Hmm, let me think. I can't think of anything, but you can do all the thinking. Anyway, let's go to the charts because I am normally a trend follower. And uh, if we take a look at the Tesla trend, then it has broken a good long downtrend. It is in an uptrend now. So this actually looks fairly OK. Uh, so from a trend point of view, Tesla right now looks very good. If we look at GM in here. General Motors, we can see that they are absolutely not in an uptrend. On the contrary, they uh, have been in a long downtrend here, and now they have been just zigzagging up and down for quite a while between the 33 and 42 something. So from a pure trend following point of view, Tesla is the winner right now. So let's dive a bit deeper, because what I'm going to look at today is what about in the long term? What about in five and 10 years time? <clears throat> First of all, I'm using my stock scanner here. It is free for now and there is a link to it below if you want to use that. Um, there have been a new feature for those of you that are uh, using the software already. Uh, today we are introducing the watch lists. I have made one here just saying car makers and I have put GM and Tesla in here. The reason why I came up with the idea for this uh, video was that I saw this one posted online today and in here we can see the profit margins by car makers uh, compared between Q2 to 22 and Q2 23. In here we can see uh, right now of course this is just a select group but Toyota is the winner here they have actually upped their uh, pre-tax profit margins from 12 to 16.3 percent. I'm not sure why they post the percentage a difference here because what this actually shows is a something like a 33% uh, improvement here. We can also see that Stellantis is doing if, uh, quite good. We can see Mercedes is about the same. But the interesting thing is that Tesla is going down from around 19.3 to 11.8%. Now this is not necessarily bad as someone would like to tell you because if they can go down in profit margin by a third but that helps themselves twice or three times or 10 times as many cars, then who cares? Uh, then I, I wouldn't care making a bit less uh, per car if I'm uh, sold five times as many cars. So there's one thing to consider. 
However, this is an important number when we start to evaluate if this is a good stock. So let's go into uh, my stock scanner and let's start out with Tesla. <coughs> we have the summary here. Uh, and if you are a user or, of the software or you know my, my videos, you know all the quality scores, you can see that we have some quite low value scores, but we'll dive into that later uh, uh, here just in a second. And if we look down here, we can see that there is uh, some, uh, let me see, earnings per share here. There is some drop in earnings per share growth, and then they accelerate again. And that is what we can see in here as well, when we see that the estimated earnings per share growth over the next two years is 14.3% per year. So here we have Tesla in the value chart. Now, what I want to do is I want to look 10 years into the future, and I want to exclude the analyst uh, estimates right now. Uh, we are using the numbers from the analysts. And if what the analysts are predicting for the next two years, the 14.3% per year, uh, and a uh, an estimated uh, price earning multiple of 56, meaning that the investors are willing to pay $56 for every $1 of bottom line profit. If that will hold through the next 10 years, then the price will uh, go up by 191%, meaning 12.6% per year. Now, you might say, that um, this 14.3% is a bit low, because if we're looking at the summary here, there is a drop, yes, on 5% uh, in, in the estimates here, but then it accelerates up to 37.5%. So let's bump this up to be a bit fair. Um, and in here, we can just put our user defined. Let's say they can actually grow by 25% on their earnings per share every single year. For the next um, for the next ten years here, sorry, this is only three years. We have to choose this again here. Twenty five years that will give you a twenty four point four percent per year in Kagar, meaning that Tesla would go up by six hundred and thirteen percent. However, the question is that if the uh, margins are coming down up until now, Tesla have been hailed like this, uh, it's not a real car maker, it's a tech company, supercomputer, so on and so forth. If they are uh, dropping quickly in their margins, people might start to price them a bit more like an actual car maker. If we look at the other car makers, they are at a PE ratio of somewhere between five and 10. So let's say that they actually drop to half. You can see uh, actually around New Year, it was just around 30. So let's just drop this, uh, to cut this in half to 28. Then you are getting 15.2% per year on the next 10 years, 251% uh, altogether. Now that is not bad at all. 15.2% per year is phenomenal. That is Warren Buffett-like. However, it is not the numbers that are normally here from Tesla investors. They're looking for a lot more. They're looking for 20, 30, 50, 100 percent per year because of supercomputers and so on and so forth. Just remember that this Dojo supercomputer that Morgan Stanley were talking about would add 500 billion dollars in market value. OK, fair enough. If we go in here, we look at their market cap right now, it's 870 million. If they should grow by the numbers we have put down here, um, they should be worth two and a half uh, times more. And uh, the 500 billion is actually just something around 60% 60, 60 extra. So they need to find some extra growth somewhere. somewhere. And 25% per year is actually astronomical. Now, you might say, all right, but look at the earnings prior to this. They have made 100% over the last 10 years. Yes, but if we look into the Tesla case, let's just look back 10 years here, because there is an important issue to discuss here when we are talking about uh, the, the growth rates of the past. Just remember <clears throat> that in the beginning of 2013, uh, Tesla was uh, selling for around two and a half, three dollars. Now, 
they are selling at 100 times as much. Meaning that at the point where we were looking at these astronomical growth figures, uh, they were actually not an $870 billion company. They were more like an $8 billion company. And it is a lot easier to grow by 95% a year if you're coming from a uh, from an $8 billion company um, it, and compared to when you're coming from a, a, almost a trillion dollar company. So uh, Elon Musk and, um, and Katie Woods, they think that in, what was it, four years, uh, Tesla can sell for $2,000. Now, what would it take? Well, first of all, uh, at a 25% growth rate and a PE of 28, well, they would actually be losing money. They would drop 6.7%. So let's say they can get their 56 in PE ratio. That would bring them up to 500. But we are talking a price tag of 2000. So what would that actually take? Well, let's try and bump the earnings up to 50. Okay, so if they can get a 56 in PE and they can grow by 50% in their earnings per share for the next uh, four years, Remember, one of the years they are actually making minus five, so uh, estimated, so they will have to really, really run fast here. So how much, if they can get a PE of 56, how much should they grow their earnings per share by each and every year, the next four years, to reach 2,000? Well, we can watch the column over here and around here. They should grow their earnings per share four years in a row by 77%, and that counting that they are estimated to make minus 5% one of the year, so they should go significantly above this. So to be honest, $2,000 in four years, they should really, really come up with something crazy, to be honest, because if they should get 650% over the next four years, well, then a $500 billion computer is nothing. They need to, to grow uh, this number by six, seven times. So they would have to come up with six, eight new supercomputer-like new inventions. Could it happen? Yes, it could happen. I, uh, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't say that it couldn't. It could also be that they only had a 50% growth rate, but that they actually had a PE of what, 80 or something. Well, that's not even enough. 90 maybe? Not even enough. 100? All right, we're getting close here. So a growth rate each year, the next four years of 50% with a PE of 100, well, then it starts to look like something. Is this um, a reasonable number? Well, I should, I can't be the judge of that. Katie Woods and Elon Musk are probably way better judges of that. What I'm saying is that when buying into Tesla, you're buying into a growth case. This is growth investing. So when you are growth investing, you are not pricing in the current earnings as much as you're pricing in future earnings. So if you think that Tesla can go to 2000 and you can make 90% per year the next four years, then that is great. And I really hope for you, if you're a Tesla investor, that you will succeed at this. But just remember that if Tesla, if we now go 10 years out in time again and bump the numbers down a bit just so that we can have the numbers here without blowing up the entire chart. If we're going 10 years out in time, we are still talking about a price of close to a thousand. And for that to happen over the next 10 years, growing earnings per share by 25%, you really, really need to put your foot right every single time. You cannot make a mistake. You cannot go with the wrong battery type. Let's say for instance, now that uh, Toyota, they are coming out with the solid state batteries. If Elon Musk says, no, we are sticking with the old uh, technology that we know, and it turns out that he was wrong, then they're not going to get 25%. What if competition comes up with something even better? Now Toyota is coming up with the solid state, so is Honda. But what if something even better comes up? Or what if a new invention uh, in hydrogen comes up that completely beats batteries off the market. And you might say, yeah, well, that could never happen. But maybe you're old enough to remember, oh, I don't know, the Nokia mobile phone. Well, at some point, they were the world leaders. And if you had asked me back in the 90s, I would say, 90s, I would say no one could ever beat Nokia at the mobile phone game. 
and then came along Apple with the smartphones and in two seconds Nokia was decimated to next to nothing. So if you're investing in a growth case, then you, the company that you invest in, if they need these insane growth rates, then they need to put their foot right every single time. They cannot misjudge a turn in technology one single time, then they, not necessarily dead, but then we can drop down the growth rates quite significantly. And if uh, Elon Musk and Tesla only grows their earnings by 10% and they can keep a PE of 28, well, then they will basically break even over the next 10 years. All right, enough about Tesla. Let's have a look at GM because GM is a fairly other case. I know they're also working on their EVs. Um, as far as I can tell, the EVs are not as good as Tesla. Maybe they will, they will get there someday. But if we're looking at the valuations here, that is an interesting case because GM is more priced like a, a motor company, a motor manufacturing car maker, because their estimated growth rate is 6.8% in earnings. They have been negative one year, but they've also had some fairly great uh, growth numbers over the last three years here. And their price earning multiples is only around five. So even uh, doing that, Going out 10 years out in the future, they are actually making 7% per year. And in here, we are not pricing any supercomputers or any quantum leaps in their technology. We are just pricing in simple, small uh, growth steps uh, in their earnings. So Tesla, we were talking about somewhere 10, 15, maybe 17% you could make over 10 years per year, of course. But that is only if they really keep up their innovations and supercomputers and all that stuff. Uh, what if General Motors can actually just speed up their, their growth rate slightly? What if they can bump it up to 8% and maybe even get their PE multiples up to their average from the last three years? Well, then you're making 14% on GM, which is the same as you would expect on Tesla. Uh, with their 25% growth rate and 28 in uh, in price earning. So what you're buying into here is more what would be called a value case, meaning that this is a more solid company. You can easily argue, and I'll not go into the technology argument here. Someone says, yeah, well, General Motors are obsolete. They are lagging way behind and so on and so forth. Um, well, I have heard that a ton of times about solid uh, value companies and saying, yeah, well, Coca-Cola or McDonald's or whatever, they're lagging behind. Someone is going to take over. Well, companies at this size are, they are mastodons. They are titans. They are not just bending over and dying. They might grow at a slower pace. Yes, but even 8% per year here at a re reasonable price earning uh, is actually giving you 14% per year. That is almost Warren Buffett-like. And you could say that the, the top end of the, uh, of, of the car manufacturers right now are, uh, if you're not counting in Tesla, they are at a PE around 10. Well, if General Motors can do a PE of 10 and a growth rate of eight, they could do 17% per year. That is better than with the Tesla case, actually, with 25% per year. I am not telling you to buy one over the other because I should not really, I'm, I'm, I'm not a tech geek, so I can't tell you if these growth rates are uh, completely out of the question for Tesla. But what I am saying is that pe people often uh, get blind staring at the growth numbers and saying, oh yeah, but with Tesla growing at 25 or 30% of year, I would take them over General Motors. Well, that certainly depends on how they price today and how much would it take for improving the earnings to get into the price. Um, so that is one thing here. I've also looked up a lot of news about Tesla and there are definitely a lot of news. I'm using Seeking Alpha here. They're talking about some AI optimism seems overblown. They have got into some of the numbers. And as I mentioned in my video about Tesla the other day, uh, the dojo, uh, the supercomputer uh, calculations here, uh, it seems like their only source of these numbers, how much that can really multiply, multiply the efficiency in the computing. 
Where do you think they got the numbers? Well, I, it seems like I guessed it right in my video the other day. It seems like their only source of these numbers are from no one, no one else than Tesla and Elon Musk himself. So no one knows where this goes. A couple of the other large banks have actually been out saying, for instance, Goldman Sachs uh, concluded that the company still has a lot of work to do to make Doja work. Uh, moreover, FSD on any vehicle seems a long way off, at least for now. So that's uh, full self-driving. Um, that means that, as I mentioned in the Tesla video the other day, these numbers with the 500 billions and the insane growth rates, well, we have heard it from Elon Musk before. We have heard it with the Cybertruck, with the semi-truck, with the full self-driving, with the everything. Uh, every time he talks about these techs, they are just around the corner as with the Dojo supercomputer, but it might actually take 10 or 20 years for them to actually get something produced with this. So there are a lot of risks for Tesla in China. Right now, China is hitting hard on, for instance, Apple and iPhone and uh, saying that government employees cannot own an iPhone and there are speculations that they might cut the entire sale of iPhones in China. Uh, someone speculates that uh, Tesla is actually in the same risk group here because China wants to produce their own EVs and, and focus on, on that. And since China is about a third of Tesla's uh, overall revenue, then there is some really, really large risks here. Uh, and as I said, this is not to say this is happening, but looking at the numbers uh, in, the, in the Tesla chart uh, here, nothing can go wrong if they need to meet uh, these insane growth numbers. So if China is cutting down and Tesla is only selling half the number of cars, or if the Dojo supercomputer is just doing half as good as, as, uh, uh, as calculated, if competition is all of a sudden going a lot faster than, than uh, estimated, then they are definitely not hitting their growth numbers. So there are a lot of risks. What about General Motors? There are also risks there. They are behind in the development of EVs. There are some strikes going on right now um, with the United Auto Workers. That will not last 10 years, but could definitely hit them in the next six or 12 months here. So there are some shorter term risks. You should always uh, take that into consideration. Uh, someone thinks that it is an undervalued bet on the EV market and you can read into the articles uh, itself. Um, so there are definitely risks in GM as well. However, they don't need the same growth rates to actually go to be a, a reasonable growth case. How much would you want to make? 17%? Well, 17% is a lot. Uh, but what about if the growth, uh, if the PE is only 7 and the growth rate is only five. Well, could you live by having 9.6% in growth rate in the next 10 years? It's actually a decent number and it is better than the average for the market. What about if we bump it down to only 3%, 2%, 1%, even at a 1% growth rate in earnings per share, General Motors would make you 5% per year at a PE of seven. So that is a fairly certain bet if you want to hold it for the 10 year uh, time span. There is a completely other uh, case if it's only two years you want to hold it or if you want to hold it 50 years. But what I'm saying is, do you want to invest in growth? Do you want to invest in value? That is what you need to decide. When you invest in value, you are investing in something that is growing slower, but where you have a good feeling what they actually produce of an income every year, and the growth rate will be a lot slower. If you want to invest in growth, like Tesla, Tesla was even more growth before, but they are still growth, at least if you ask Elon Musk and Katie Woods. Um, if you want to invest in that, you are investing in, uh, in a hope for the future. And sometimes that hope comes through and you're making a ton of money, but it doesn't take much for the growth case to, to, to tumble. Will that happen for Tesla? I haven't got a clue. You're the experts and you're probably more clever about their Tesla and their potential out there. What I'm saying is take care not to fall for the easy headlines of $2,000 per, per share and supercomputers. Do your own due diligence. Look at the charts. Look at the earnings. Uh, look in my stock scanner and put in what you think is reasonable growth in earnings and reasonable price earning uh, ratios. And then you get a good picture of 
is this a good deal for me? So when it comes to, to the end, it all depends on you, on your risk tolerance, on your strategies. Tesla could be a fantastic play, but so could GM probably. All right, that's all for now. I'm sorry it turned into a bit of a long video, but there were many details I need to, to explain. Until next time, take care of yourself and your money out there, and I'll speak to you again shortly. Bye.